The FIAs are finally back and we are back with a brand new view. Stay tuned for this race, you are not going to want to miss it. Hey guys and welcome along to another video. If this is your first time here and you are watching all sorts of sim racing related stuff, subscribe now and click the bell icon so you get notified of every video I upload and you don't miss a thing. So today's race is that FIA manufacturer's race that contained the dirty driver that you may have seen in the last video. Now if you don't know what I'm talking about, go and check that one out. It is absolutely amazing. But moving to this video, you can see that I'm just in qualifying and we've currently put in a 138.5 and we're just gonna cross the line to do a little bit better and put ourselves just about in the mid pack. And it wasn't, to be honest, the greatest lap, but as you're gonna see from the grid, this is definitely the tightest race I think I've ever been in. And this is why. Check out the Audi here in fourth with a 138.0. This is me in 11th with a 138.4 and it goes all the way to 18th with a 138.7. So that's six tenths covering from fourth all the way down to 18th. So it's gonna be a close one. We're gonna go over the start finish line here to start the first of 11 laps round here in the Red Bull Ring. We're in group four, and as you can see by the different view, which I'll cover later, we are in the Aston Martin. So coming into the first corner here, I don't want to blow it in the first corner, so I don't make a move on him. What that's done is that's compromised my exit, and we've got the GTR, which I'm quite happy is being used to be quite honest, you don't often see it that much, is trying to make a move down the inside into turn number two. Now because it's so tight, the field that is, I'm going to end up hanging it round the outside and trying my best to keep him behind and not lose any positions. But this is going to continue here. This guy in the GTR, we are going to be battling with for pretty much the rest of the lap. I'm being helped out here by the Mitsubishi's slipstream out in front. I'm going to go a little bit tighter in a defensive manner, but I get a bit of a wiggle on coming out of turn number three. So that's going to get the GTR alongside us here. But I've positioned myself, I think, in quite a good position up the inside here. There's no way he's going to go around the outside, but he will have an opportunity to cut back up underneath us which puts us in the outside position for this next car. I'm trying to keep it hung out on the outside but to be honest he carries too much speed so we're going to tuck back in here and go straight back up the inside or at least try to into the penultimate corner here. I'm going to give him just enough room there's no contact there at this point and we're down into the final corner so this battle's been going on for about half a lap now he's going to pick up a penalty which means we should be fine but we're up the inside anyway as we start lap number two so we should be able to make the pass down into turn number one we're late on the brakes here make sure that we make the corner and we manage to keep the position God, that was quite an intense battle but a clean one nonetheless but as you can see we've lost about two seconds to the group up in front by doing that battling. So as we come into turn number two here for the second time, we're gonna see as we look behind us, the damage just only a 0.8 second penalty is gonna to cause to the Nissan as somebody else, the Viper there, driven by the Spaniard, also has a penalty. So we are now up into 10th. But as you can see, we've got a one, two, three, four, five way battle for fifth place here and we've managed to get right up behind them pretty much instantaneously. As we saw before we don't want to get any penalties because they're absolutely critical in the FIA races. There's no getting rid of them or anything like that which I really really like and there's two gates here around the red bull ring in pretty well placed places to be quite honest. Here's one here we've already seen the one at the earlier part of the lap so I can't afford to cut any corners or make any contact. As we saw, the grid is super close and this has followed on into the race here 
as you can see, the one, two, three, four, five people battling for fifth place. So we're going to start lap number three now. As I've mentioned, the best place to overtake on this circuit is probably turn number two, which means we're going to have to go slow in fast out of turn number one, which should hopefully give us a run all the way up the hill into turn number two. So we're sat in the slipstream here of the Porsche Cayman up in front. We're closing, we're closing, we're closing. We're probably not going to be close enough at this point. I'm going to have a look, but it wasn't on, so I pulled out of it there. Again, life advice, guys. Listen to it. Always pull out. But by not going for that move, we're now getting serious pressure, as you can see, from the Spaniard in the Viper behind. And we cannot afford to be losing any places. This field is just too tight to be messing around battling. As we start lap number four, again, we're going to try and go slow in fast out here. We know we've not got any issues with the guy behind. We can keep an eye on him on the radar and looking back where we need to we've got a much better run here on the Porsche so we should be able to make a move into turn number two so we're closing we're closing we're closing here he's going to go to defend but we're going to move right out to the right pick our breaking point there's been a bit of an accordion effect here which means we're going to get another place try and keep it clean and keep it tight on the exit so we don't run anyone out of road so we're up to eight we've taken two places here and we could get a third if we manage to get past this alpha. So he's gone to the inside here. We've managed to get past him, but he is going to have the inside going into the corner. So I'm going to break a little bit earlier. And we're going to keep it really tight on the exit so we can come back up, get a good amount of drive, avoid that cone there. We don't want that flicking up. And we've managed to make the move stick. So now we're up to seventh, having started the lap in tenth but I've got to keep my wits about me to keep the seventh place. Whilst I want to push on and get to the battle for fifth up in front, this little alpha behind us could be really quite strong through the second part. And the Aston Martin's a bit of a lump, to be honest. As we can see here, as I miss the apex run wide and the little alpha just chucked it straight up the inside here and he's going to make the move stick. But what that means for us is we're going to get the run on him here. What they make up for in nimbleness, we make up for in pure grunt. So we're going to get our foot down and we're going to take the place back going into turn number one. There's a bit of contact here. The alpha breaks a little bit late, which pushes us wide. And as we look behind here, he's managed to pick himself up a penalty. Cool, there's quite a few angry guys behind us. Don't want to get stuck in with that. But as I say, he's got a penalty so he should no longer be an issue for us. But that again, guys, re-emphasizes the importance of not getting penalties, whether that be through shortcuts or cutting the track in any way, or contact. Just you cannot afford to get them in these FIA, so be a bit more conservative, otherwise you'll get hammered going through those gates and you'll quickly find any hopes of a good result will get ruined. It's just not worth it. The risk of getting a little bit of time back from cutting a corner or one place from putting in a robust move just isn't worth it. You'll lose far more time when it comes to serving that penalty. But all the mumbo jumbo that's gone on behind us has now afforded us about a two second gap. So I don't need to look behind anymore and I can just concentrate on the two guys up in front. And speaking of looking behind, I thought I'd introduce to you my new view. I've decided to go with the hood view now. I would forgive you if some of you thought this was one of Tiffany's videos until you saw how early I braked and how slow my lap times were. But I have decided, as I said, to go with the hood view. And really, that's for three reasons. One, it's higher, so I can see more of what's going on. I can also put myself in better positions with hitting the apex and making moves, which has actually helped me to get a little bit faster. And finally, there's also no rear view mirror, so I can concentrate more of just looking up ahead rather than worrying about what's going on behind. I found myself sort of getting a bit too conservative and worrying about what was going on behind me, when really I should be concentrating on what's going on in front getting after the guys in front, getting the best 
finished possible at all times and any issues with people in my close proximity I can use the radar for and so far I'm actually really enjoying it. Let me know in the comment section down below what view you use and why. Have you changed your view recently or have you stuck with the same one through all the Gran Turismo's that you've raced on? Either way let me know down below I'll be really interested to find out. As I've been talking we are now on lap number six so our strategy other than not getting any penalties in this new view is going to be to non-stop. So we're going to see up ahead here some people starting to come in which I'm not entirely sure about to be honest with you. It is quite a short pit lane though here at Red Bull Ring so it might work out but in this one race that I'm doing in the FIAs I'm only going to do one race each because I just don't have the time to do any more. I am going to go with the no stopper so we'll see how that one pans out. But with those two guys going in for the moment we are up to fifth and as you can see we're catching up with the Mitsubishi in fourth and the guy up in third has managed to get himself a penalty so things at this point are looking pretty good. But one thing I am pretty conscious of is how fast those two who have come in are going to be in the final couple of the laps of this race. As we'll be on really really worn tyres it's going to be interesting to see if they can make up the gap that they've lost through the pit stops with their better conditioned tyres. But as you can see up in front both of these guys are really struggling at the moment with caught right up behind them so we need to get past them as soon as possible. As we fast forward to the end of the lap here, just about to start lap number 8, we've got a good run on the Mitsubishi coming down the front straight here. He's going to go defensive, so we're going to stay in the slipstream for as long as possible and we're going to try and go around the outside into turn number 1. We give him enough room in case he leaves his nose in there, but he doesn't do it and we make the move stick. Really, really good move there, even if I do say so myself, certainly one of my better moves. And we are now up to fourth. As we come across the line to start lap number nine, the gap has come down a little bit to the guy up in front here. What I'm more worried about is look behind. The Spaniard and the Hungarian guy, I think it's a Hungarian guy, going colorblind have just overtaken the Mitsubishi so now there's nothing but 1.7 seconds and a penalty between us and them. So when I anticipated that they'd be coming strong at the end of the race I was right so really I think I'm racing Apex Callan here someone who I have raced before very quick driver very clean driver as well so I'm looking forward to a clean race with him. What is going to be interesting is to see how I can try not to lose too much time with these quicker guys on fresher tyres coming through so that I can make a move on Apex Callan by the end of the race but I guess we shall see. So the time has come here as we look behind to see what is going to go on when we get overtaken by this guy here. So the TT is going to go to the inside if he's going to make the move, I'm just going to let him through. I leave the door open. I want him to come through with me losing as little time as possible here. Then hopefully when he overtakes Apex Callan, he'll lose more time. But Callan has also got a penalty, which is also going to help us. So we're following the TT down into turn number two here. And he's just going to break really, really early. Leave the door open for us and then almost not look on his radar here. And he just bumps into us. I don't know why that in. He turns in as Apex Callan serves his penalty here. So we're going to get the run on him and we're going to be up to third. But keep our eye here on the radar. The TT is going to go for a lunge here down the inside. I leave him room. He doesn't make the Apex though. Hits us which is going to allow Callan down the outside. So we've lost the place for now. However, we've got the inside coming into this next corner here. I'm going to try and keep it as tight as we can with these worn tyres so that Callan can't come back 
underneath us through the S's here got a quick left right you can't run up onto that curb otherwise you will get a penalty which as we know will destroy your race but now we're looking at fourth Callan's behind us now but also there's a guy in a Peugeot who we also need to be really really aware of as we all get a bit of a slide on coming out the final corner before we start the final lap. We're going to stay on board here for the final lap to see how everything unfolds. So we're going to come down into turn number one, the Castrol edge curve. Important not to run too wide there, do not want a penalty at this late stage. And then we've got a long run all the way up the hill to turn number two. It looks like Apex Callan is just falling away so it'll be interesting to see how quickly the guy in fifth, oh, as I say that, dispatches of him. The guy in fifth there, oh, there's a bit of a battle going on it seems. But he's still in sixth for now, which could help us. They're side by side here, as you can see, as we come down into Schloss Gold, turn number three. This is really where we lose most of our time here. This big brute of a car, the Aston Martin, on worn tyres, worn hard tyres as well is a bit of a pig to get in to hit the apex. But the Peugeot here has managed to overtake Callan. He's now four tenths behind us as we struggle round turn number four into turns number five and through six. But the main thing for me, as we go wide as possible without getting a penalty there, just scrubbing our tires across the uh, the tarmac, I'm going to go defensive, try and make and go around the outside into turn number seven. I have to break a little bit earlier because I need to make sure that he's got room. He goes wide there so we can get on the power earlier. Coming down into the final corner, the Red Bull mobile corner. I could have hung him out to dry there and run him wide, but I wouldn't have done. And we've got a run with Callan down to the line, but we pick up fifth. And as a result, we get 1,347 championship points and 700 driver rating points. A good result, but for now, guys, that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button and make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.